Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my video on the alternative transistor architecture to fins. Before we dive in into the content of this video, I would like to spend a few minutes to talk about the way I have structured my video. Firstly, I begin with a quick introduction to FinFits and why FinFits came into being in the first place. Secondly, we look at the other alternatives that are available to us today because of the various shortcomings of FinFits. These alternatives being the planar FDSY architecture and the vertical TFET architecture. We then look at these architectures in detail and then we do a comparison of these architectures with the FinFET architecture against various performance metrics. Finally, I end with a summary of all the above topics. What are FinFETs? FinFETs are non-planar double gate transistor devices that are built on an SOI or a bulk substrate which are based on the single gate transistor design. Evidently, from the figure, we can see that the only significant difference between the traditional planar transistor and the 3D FinFET transistor is the presence of a 3D conducting channel in the latter, which is otherwise called the fin. This begs the question, why would we want to move from a planar transistor device to a 3D device in the first place? Well, the collective response to this would be to overcome the short channel effects that are present in a planar transistor. These include drain induced barrier lowering or double and then the large leakage current that is the current that flows when the transistor is in the off state and finally the large sub threshold slope of the planar transistor. Let us now try to understand the first short channel effect that is the drain induced barrier loading. Now uh, we have a short channel transistor and we have the three energy band diagrams each of which correspond to increasing gate and drain voltages respectively. As you can see in the second energy band diagram the gate voltage increases and the potential barrier that we have seen in the first energy ba band diagram has been pushed down. Hence electrons are able to navigate or overcome this potential barrier more easily and flow from the source to the drain. Now when a drain voltage is applied in the case of the third energy band diagram we can see that the entire topography of the band diagram has changed and now the electrons are able to overcome this potential barrier irrespective of the presence of the gate voltage. This phenomena is known as drain induced barrier lowering. Now that we have understood the drain induced barrier lowering phenomena, let us try to understand how this affects the sub threshold slope and the leakage current characteristics. We will only be focusing on the left curve that is the curve of the smaller gate length because this after all is a short channel effect. Now we can see that for a higher PDS the ID versus VG curve has shifted to the left. This means that for the same VG now we have a much higher ID than we used to have before. Hence the leakage current has increased with the increase in PDS. Similarly we can also see that the slope on the left is much higher than the slope on the right which also means that the sub threshold slope has increased with the increase in VDS. Hence the drain induced barrier lowering causes the leakage current to increase as well as the sub threshold slope to increase both of which are not desirable effects. Adopting the FinFET technology does help us overcome these short channel effects. The wraparound gate structure provides a better electrical control over the channel and helps in reducing the leakage current, the dibble and the sub threshold slope effects. Now let us take a look at some of the key shortcomings of the FinFET technology. First of all since it's a 3D process as opposed to a planar process there is an expected increase in the process complexity which also causes a decrease in the yield. Additionally extraction of FinFET parasitics are difficult and good parasitic models of the FinFETs need to be established. Finally there is a significant increase in the on-chip variation which again adversely affects the device performance. Now, 
let us look at alternative transistor schemes to overcome these shortcomings. The first of these being the planar FDSOI that is the fully depleted silicon on insulator architecture and then the vertical defect architecture. A key point to note would be that both of these architectures are planar as compared to the FinFET architecture which is a 3D architecture. Finally, I will be focusing more on the planar FDSI architecture as this is a more widely accepted and a more widely used uh, architecture for commercial purposes. Without further ado, let us have a look at the planar FDSI architecture. We can see that the FDSI architecture is in fact very similar to the bulk architecture which consists of the source, the gate and the drain which are etched on to the P-type substrate in case of a N-MOSFET. Now, having a look at the FDSI architecture, we can see that the only difference between the bulk architecture and the FDSI architecture is the presence of a extra buried oxide layer on which the source, the gate and the drain are etched on to. The FDSOI device is also referred to as the ultra thin body and buried oxide device. Looking at a zoomed in view of the FDSOI device, we can see that it consists of an ultra thin body that is etched onto an already thin buried oxide layer, hence giving rise to the name UTTB or ultra thin body and buried oxide device. Now, let us take a look at the off state characteristics of a FDSOI device. In order to understand the off-state characteristics of a FDSOI device, let us now revisit the off-state characteristics of a short-channel bulk transistor architecture. In the case of a short-channel bulk transistor architecture, the tunneling of electrons from the source to the drain takes place irrespective of the presence of the gate voltage because of the short channel. This causes a significant leakage current in the device. However, the presence of the buried oxide insulator layer prevents the tunneling of electrons from the source to the drain in the FDSOI device and hence ensures a very low leakage current and hence ensures good off-state characteristics of the device. The FDSOI device derives its name from the fact that it is a fully depleted SOI device which means that there is no additional dopants that is added to the source and drain junctions. The absence of dopants in a FDSOI devices ensures lesser process variations which in turn ensures a reduction in on-chip variation. This improves the performance of an FDSOI device making it one of its key advantages. Let us look at how body biasing affects a FDSOI device. In the case of FinFETs, the wraparound gate structure around the channel offers much greater switching control. Similarly, in the FDSOI device, we can achieve much greater switching control by simply creating another gate. This is done by providing an external bias to the body which creates a buried gate on the other side of the buried oxide layer. As we can see in the picture, the application of a bias to the substrate results in the creation of a buried gate exactly opposite to the top gate on the other side of the oxide layer. Hence, the transistor now behaves as a vertical double gate transistor. Unlike the bulk transistor architecture, the FDSI technology is scalable. This means that the FDSI technology can be adapted to lower process nodes while ensuring performance improvement is achieved. When we look at the manufacturing of FDSI devices, we see that it's a much simpler process than those of the FinFET devices because it is a planar technology as opposed to a 3D technology. Additionally, we see that there are 15% less process steps in the FDSI technology which means that the manufacturing costs are reduced and the cycle time is lowered. Furthermore, this is a less destructive process as compared to the FinFET technology which means that the yield is also increased. Now, 
let us compare the various performance metrics of the FTSOI devices versus the FinFIDs. Now, this is a pretty recent chart that was published in uh, AETM 2013 and uh, looking at the last two columns towards the right, for both the 10 nanometer node and the 7 nanometer node, we can find that the uh, Dibble and the SS, that is the subthreshold slope characteristics of the FinFIDs are much better than those of the FDSOI devices. Now, let us look at the cost versus performance comparison of the FDSOI devices and the FinFIDs. Looking at the chart, we can see that the FDSOI devices keeping on track with the most law of a better performance at decreasing per unit cost, whereas the bulk and the FinFET devices offer better performance at the expense of increasing per unit cost. Hence, we can say that the FDSY devices ensure that the Moore's law is honored. Now that we are done with the FDSY architecture, let us have a look at the vertical DFET architecture. Before we begin to look at the vertical DFET architecture, let us first try to understand the function of a DFET or a tunneling FET. DFET is a switching device which switches by modulating the quantum tunneling through a barrier instead of modulating the thermionic emission over a barrier which is the case with traditional MOSFETs. <laughs> Let us take a look at the DFET architecture. The defect architecture is similar to that of a MOSFET except the fact that the source and the drain terminals of a defect are doped with opposite type two bits. Additionally, a common defect device structure consists of a pin type that is the P-type intrinsic and N-type junction in which the potential of the intrinsic region is controlled by the gate. Now that we are familiar with the basics of FETs, let us finally look at the vertical TFET architecture. On the left side, we have a lateral TFET or the traditional TFET where the current conduction happens due to the horizontal tunneling of electrons from the source to drain. As we can see, the P plus layer in the lateral TFET lies in the same plane as the N plus layer of the drain. The problem in a lateral TFET occurs when the gate length is too small. In this case, the electrons are able to tunnel through from the source to the drain irrespective of the presence of the gate voltage. However, in the case of a vertical TFET, if we have a P plus layer that is undercut from the drain, the tunneling that happens from the source to drain is in the vertical direction. In this case, the problem that we have observed in the lateral TFET is solved. So, the vertical tunneling that takes place is in line with the gate voltage and the gate voltage is able to control the current conduction that happens from the source to the drain. Now, let us take a look at the advantages of the vertical TFET architecture. The major advantage of the vertical TFET architecture is that this subthreshold slope is almost like a step function. So, this means that the controllability of the drain current why the gate voltage has greatly increased. Now, let us take a look at the shortcomings of the vertical TFET architecture. The most important shortcoming is that the drain undercut that we have seen in the vertical TFET architecture is very difficult to fabricate. Additionally, it also poses some scaling challenges. The drain current actually decreases as the gate length decreases which opposes Moore's law. Finally, we also have to take the stray parasitic effects of the vertical defect architecture into account. Now that we finally learnt about the FinFETs, the FDSOIs and the vertical defects, let us summarize whatever we've learned so far. Firstly, the FinFET technologies do help overcome the short channel effects that are present in traditional planar transistors, but these come at a price. That is the increased manufacturing overhead and the rising complexity of the FinFET design processes. However, uh, we have alternate technologies such as the planar FD SOI architecture and the vertical TFET architecture to come to a rescue. The planar FD SOI in particular looks promising, but it in fact has poorer DIBL and subthreshold slope characteristics as compared to the FinFET. But it also has the advantage of an easier design process and reduced manufacturing overhead.
the vertical defect in fact has a very good sub threshold slope characteristics but say parasitic effects and difficulty in scaling pose a difficult challenge and further techniques must be explored to ensure that you know more research is being done to work on the problems that we face in the field finally thank you so much for watching my video and please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions and your feedback Thank you.